Hi there, I'm Bill Peterson for Geek Funk Labs, and this is the Squish Box. It's a software synthesizer, which is what makes it squishy. It's got USB ports for you to plug in your MIDI controllers, and audio outputs that can send left and right stereo, a mono signal, or output to a headphone jack. The Squish Box is kind of like the brain of a big, expensive performance keyboard, but it's much more portable, so you can use it with whatever MIDI keyboard, drum controller, or electronic wind instrument you want, and have all your same sounds and performance setups available. But it's also a lot more flexible. You can assign any combination of sounds to whatever keys or pads you want. You can customize how the different knobs and sliders on your controller will modify the sounds. It can also arpeggiate notes, play MIDI sequences and backing tracks, and you can even build effects chains with tons of freely available software plugins. The Squishbox comes with a bunch of preloaded sounds on it. It uses the sound font file format to store sounds, and you can find tons of these on the internet, both free and paid, and you can even create them yourself. Let's take a look at the hardware inside the Squishbox. As you might have guessed, there's a Raspberry Pi running the show. A Model 4 boots up and runs faster and comes with extra RAM if you're willing to pay, but a 3B Plus will handle things just fine and actually stays a bit cooler. To get good quality low latency audio out of the Pi, we use this add-on sound card that connects directly to the Pi's GPIO pins. It uses the same chip you'll find in a lot of higher-end audio cards for the Pi, but skips a lot of the extra features and connectors so it's more compact. A backlit 16x2 character LCD provides information and visual feedback to the user. The Squishbox can be built with different combinations of controls, but the default version uses a rotary encoder with a push button for selecting patches and options and opening menus, and a momentary button that can be programmed to act, for example, as a sustain pedal, an effects toggle, or whatever the user needs. Some sturdy jacks provide audio and power, and everything is tied together using this custom printed circuit board. It has pads along the bottom edge to connect the controls and a status LED, and a bunch along the top edge to connect possible future modifications to the Raspberry Pi. The Squishbox can be built to run off a 5V or 9V adapter. Complete assembly instructions can be found at geekfunklabs.com, but here's a high-speed run-through of the construction. A couple resistors are soldered in place first, and a contrast adjustment potentiometer is mounted in a spot where it'll be accessible by inserting a screwdriver between the USB ports of the Pi. Strips of colored ribbon cable are used to connect the controls and jacks to the board. This keeps things organized and makes it easier to identify the connections. The sound card is soldered to the back side of the PCB. The LCD goes on top and sits very high on its pins so it can clear the USB ports of the Pi and reach the front of the box. Once the electronics are assembled, it forms a sandwich of components that fits on top of the Raspberry Pi, but is still compact enough to fit inside an aluminum enclosure like the ones used for a lot of guitar effects, or into a 3D printed enclosure like this one. The controls and jacks are first mounted in the enclosure, then the ribbon cables from the electronics assembly are soldered to the appropriate connections. The software for the Squishbox is installed in an existing Raspberry Pi OS using a one-line command that runs the setup script over the internet. It also provides the option to update the system, download extra sound fonts, and install a web browser interface for uploading and editing files. Once it's all put together, connect your MIDI controller and headphones or amplifier, and plug in the squish box. Once it starts up, it loads whatever bank you were using last, and you can immediately start playing and select different patches using the rotary encoder.
press and hold the rotary encoder for a couple seconds to open the menu. Here you can load and save banks, rename, save, or delete patches, and adjust some of the built-in effects of the squish box. There's also a system options menu that has options for safely shutting down the squish box, managing your MIDI connections and monitoring MIDI messages, connecting to different Wi-Fi networks, adding banks and sound fonts from a USB stick, and updating the Squishbox software over a network. You can also use the menu to open a single sound font and then switch between and play the different presets or instruments in that sound font. You can then use the menu to add presets as patches in your current bank. This gives you a way to quickly add patches with different instruments to your bank files. But as shown at the beginning of the video, patches are more than just single sound font presets. They can split and layer sounds and have all sorts of additional effects. These things are all defined and controlled by the user in the bank files, which use a custom human-readable text format. Geekfunk Labs has created a series of lesson videos that explain how to compose patches in this bank file format, as well as teach a lot of things about MIDI and electronic music. The Squishbox has a web interface that can be used to edit and organize your bank files, as well as upload additional sound fonts. The software that runs on the Squishbox can also be installed on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux desktop operating systems. This gives you a graphical version of the software that you can play live and also edit the banks in place and hear the effect of your changes immediately. I created the Squishbox because I've always been interested in synthesizers and virtual instruments, but I found myself spending lots of time and money learning different software packages and hardware devices, each of which seemed like only a partial solution to the things I could imagine doing with my music. So I decided to create my own device and make it as versatile and customizable as I could. And once I got started on this project, it seemed like something that needed to be shared. And it's certainly benefited from the suggestions and ideas that I've already gotten from people about it. To this end, I've tried to make the Squishbox as much a free hardware device as possible free in the sense that you have access to the hardware schematics and the source code of the software that runs on it, and you're free to modify those in the ways that you need, and help is provided for you to do those things if you want to. I've also tried to keep the Squishbox within the grasp of creators who may not have a lot of prior electronics or programming experience. You can get the Squishbox as a kit or a completely assembled unit, but you can also build one yourself from scratch out of mostly off-the-shelf parts and I've provided links to those things down in the video description. So, get out there, get creating, and stay funky.